Okay. Hosiah chapter 4, verses 6 up to 8. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you, the priestly nation, have rejected knowledge. I will also reject you that you shall be no priest to me, seeing you have forgotten the law of your God. I will also forget your children. The more they increase and multiplied in, in prosperity and power, the more they sin against me. I will change their glory into shame. They feed on the, on the sin of my people and set their heart on their iniquity. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for uh, the lives of each and every one of us. We thank you for all the good things you've done for the excellent things you've done in our lives, Lord. We thank you for listening to our prayers, and we continually pray for your favor upon us, Lord God. Uh, may you bless our hearts as we listen to your word, so that your word will correct our attitude, our relationships before you, and uh, we will be able to repent, O oh Lord God, and give up what is not pleasing unto you. And we claim that the conviction of your spirit will speak upon our, us and, and our hearts would not be rebellious but will be obedient to your word. And this we ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. You may now all be seated. Uh, pleasant afternoon to all of you. May kausap ba ako? And on behalf of the church, I would like to welcome our visitors for coming today. Thank you for coming. It's, it's our pleasure to see you today. Uh, we will pray for you later uh, once I finish with my topic. Thank you for coming. Where's my friend, Steve? <laughs> okay, so... Uh, obviously, my topic is about lack of knowledge. Um, in all aspects of life, knowledge is essential. Do you agree with me? Okay, I, I'll show you my point. If there is something we should be ashamed of, it should be from being ignorant to God's word. You should not be ashamed of what you don't have. You should not be ashamed of your physical appearance. You should be ashamed if you are ignorant to God's word. Amen? Okay, so do you know what is a dynamo? No? I'll show you what is a dynamo. <laughs> this is a dynamo. A closer look. Do you know what? <laughs> do you know where it is used? Okay, blood pressure. Okay. It's not that clear here, but the, this one is the blood pressure reading. Why I'm showing this? Because it, it should also says here the saturation and the pulse here, but it's not there in the picture. What I'm trying to say here is the normal saturation of, of a man or human being should be 90 up to 100%. If it goes below 90, the dynamap will bleed. It will tell you that there is no enough oxygen running on the blood. Are you with me? Okay, let's say another example. Our pulse, the normal pulse is 60 to 100. If it goes 120, the machine will bleep it and it is telling you there's something wrong. If it goes 50, the, the machine will bleep as well. Why? It is telling you that the heart is quite lazy. The, the heart is sleeping most of the time. Are you with me? What I, what I do in, <laughs> in most cases... If our patients got a tracheostomy tube and the sucks drop to 88, the machine will keep on blipping. So what I do, I will lower the standard. I will set 
the dynamap on the minimum of 88. So even if it goes 88, it would not bleed because I lower the standard. Are you with me? And it is so with their pulse. Although our normal pulse is between 60 to 100, some of our patients goes even to 38. What's wrong with that, Pastor? It's not, it's not right, really. <laughs> Imagine, your normal pulse or heartbeat should be 60 to 100, and our patients got sometimes 38. That's quite lazy. <laughs> there could be reasons for that, but what I'm trying to say, to avoid the machine from bleeping, I will set it on 40. Even if it goes 40, it won't bleep. It only bleeps if it goes down 38. Okay? What about that, Pastor? It is so when it comes to standards of morality. If there is something wrong and you're not saying anything, your standards must be low. I'll show you an, an example. Okay, I've said that already. Let's say for example, Paul says, says on homo homosexuality or same-sex marriage, what did the Pope say? Although we are not Catholics, but <laughs> it's just an example. The Pope says, uh, the Pope is quite gay friendly. He said, we are not condemning the gay, we will condemn to the church. And there's no problem about that. The problem is if you just tolerate them of what they're doing. Amen? Who are we to judge? We are not here to judge, but we should not tolerate what they're doing. Amen? And uh, another example, the Pope says, uh, they are against same-sex marriage, but they are going to investigate about it. What is there to investigate? <laughs> huh? <laughs> I was, I, I feel insulted when one of my colleagues asked me, are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a pastor. And, and he told me, why is it that other priests uh, get, get married those same se uh, of the same sex? And I told him, excuse me, we don't do that in our church. Well, if there is a Catholic church or whatever church that was who, who marries uh, the same sex, it's very wrong. Isn't it? Pastor, are you trying to say there, there is somebody who wanted to marry the same sex in church? No, that's not my point. Our topic is about lack of knowledge. Okay? So he also said God is not a magician to create the world simply like that. Imagine. And guess what? They said that the Pope would never get wrong. Do you agree on that? He's just a human being. God is not a magician to create the world simply like that. He doesn't believe that God created the universe with just saying his word. And, God, and the Bible says, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Done. He doesn't believe in that. There's something wrong on him. Isn't it? And the Bible says, blind leaders could not lead the blind. Okay? So, he now believes in the Big Bang Theory. Oh my goodness. Big Bang Theory. That out of, out of an explosion, explosion, the universe exists. That's the Big Bang Theory. Do you believe in that? If you believe in Big Bang Theory, you should not believe in the Bible. If you believe in the Bible, you should not believe on this theory. Okay, so our aim for this topic is for us not to perish due to ignorance. Because as what we have read, my people perish because they lack knowledge. Second aim, for us to be equipped with God's word and be grounded on it. And third is, for us to have standards of living based on God's word. Why are you so serious like that? 
<laughs> okay, just one example. I started driving our motorcycle or motor motorcycle in Bisaya <laughs> with a sidecar on it. Imagine I was just 12 years old. I was driving a motorcycle with a sidecar because it doesn't matter if the, you've got a license or not in the province. And even until now, <laughs> in the Philippines, it doesn't matter a lot if you have a license or not. If you have an accident, then that matters a lot. <laughs> my point here is, my, my sister at that time was 14 years old, and she asked me to teach her how to drive the motorcycle. With a sidecar, side it's not so difficult. So I told her, this is what you do. Uh, now, uh, she was driving the motorcycle, and then she gets panicked. She went on the left side and uh, <laughs> turned up the accelerator. So the, the motorcycle was speeding. And I told her, why did you brake? I don't know where the brake is. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> and it is so, the Bible says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Amen? Another example, I've used this example in our Bible study in Fulham. Uh, there was an incident in the hospital that every three o'clock, one of the patients in the ICU died. It took a while and it all, they, they noticed that almost every day, one of the patients in the ICU died. So they put a monitoring or CCTV camera and they found out the reason why one of their patients died at the same time. Because the domestic cleaner will go into the ICU and then he will plug out the, the machine, the defibrillator machine and plug on his vacuum cleaner. And that is why the Bible said, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Amen? If you don't believe on that, <laughs> you will perish soon. <laughs> okay, so there are some aspects I'm going to discuss. First, regarding homosexuality, what do you understand with the word homosexuality? Does it refer to gays only? Or lesbians only, or both? both? Both, okay. Adjective of the word homosexual, meaning involving or characterized by sexual attraction between people of the same sex. For the noun, a person who is sexually attracted to people of their own sex. Why, why do I have to share this? Because <laughs> there is a saying, kapwa ko, mahal ko. They love their own. <laughs> men love their fellow men and women love their fellow women. Okay, so what's wrong about homosexuality then? May I ask you? They can't reproduce? Is that all? <laughs> Is sex about, all about reproduction? <laughs> What's wrong about homosexuality? Huh? God commands? Okay, it goes back to the creation. Homosexuality is an abomination to God. God hates it so much. Okay? If we go back to Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. But some gays or lesbians, no, no offense, they will say, it is not my fault if God created me like this. Did God create a shemale? <laughs> Did God create a female? No, God created male and female. Female, there is no female and there is no female. <laughs> so it is a deception to say God created them a gay or a lesbian. God doesn't create lesbians or a gay. Why are 
why are they like that, Pastor? I don't know what went wrong. <laughs> okay, so Genesis chapter 19, verse 4, just to prove you that God hated or homosexuality is ab abomination to God, Genesis chapter 19, verse 4, now before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house. There were two angels who came to Lot's house, and then all the people of Sodom went to, to Lot's house because they wanted to have sex with the men, or with the visitors of Lot. So verse 5 says, And they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them carnally. Ew. Lost visitors were men, and these people were men as well, and they wanted to have sexual intercourse with lost visitors. What are they going to do? Kadiri, <laughs> Verse 6, So Lot went out to them through the doorway, shut the door behind him, and said, Please, my brethren, do not do so wickedly. See, now I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please let me bring them out to you and you may do to them as you wish. Only do nothing to these men since this is the reason they have come under the shadow of my roof. And they said, stand back. Then they said, this one came in to stay here and, the, and he keeps acting as a judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. So the Press hard against the man, Lot. How hospitable Lot was. He was over his two, two virgin daughters, never been touched, never been kissed. <laughs> if you want, here's my two daughters. You can do whatever you like to them. But this man said, we don't like your daughters. Ouch. No offense, I don't think they were ugly. Lot's daughters were not ugly. They were just not attracted to women. They're just attracted to men. <laughs> okay, so, and came here to break down the door. If God were okay with homosexuality, then he would have done nothing to Sodom and Gomorrah. Are you following me? If God was okay, okay, I, I have no problem with homosexuality. Carry on with your living. But God did not tolerate it. He condemned Sodom and Gomorrah with, with what? With fire. Okay? So in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, now all these things happen to them as examples. And they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the age have come. So the, the incident of Sodom and Gomorrah was written for our examples. It should be enough that we should learn to obey and fear God. Amen? I just remember, <laughs> I just remember a gay back home. Uh, there was a stabbing incident because uh, we all we have this uh, sky's the limit barbecue uh, place in back home. It's it, it's called sky's the limit because it finishes or it closes around five o'clock, and there was a, a man stabbed in in that place, and then the man who stabbed that man was passing through the gate, he made them male and female, and said. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be united firmly. This is the amplified version. And join inseparably to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. Yes? So once you're married, you're no longer, you're no longer one person or two individual person, but you are, the two person will become one. Yes? Okay? 
So they are no longer two, but one flesh. But what therefore, what therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder or separate. Verse 7, they said to him, Why did then Moses command us to give a certificate of divorce and thus dismiss and repudiate a wife? If divorce is not allowed, why did Moses allow it? Okay, he said to them, because of the hardness, or stubbornness, and perversity of your hearts, Moses permitted you to dismiss and repudiate and divorce your wives, but from the beginning, it has not, it has not been so ordained. It wasn't accepted. It wasn't like that. It was just permitted. Are you following? Verse 9, let's, let's read verse 9. I say to you, Whoever dismisses or repudiates, divorces his wife, except for unchastity, and marries another, commits adultery. And he who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. You can divorce only for one reason. What's, what's that reason? Unchastity or unfaithfulness. Let's say, for example, if I had uh, an extra marital relationship, if I had a third party, my wife can divorce me and she can get married without committing adultery. Yes? But, if I am the one divorcing her and I'm getting married again, I am committing adultery. Claro ba? Claro? Claro. Okay? So the only reason that you could divorce and marry another without committing adultery is unfaithfulness of the other. Yes? Okay? If the husband had sex or involved to a third party, the wife can divorce him and can marry again. She is not an adulterer and vice versa. Yes? If your spouse is an adulterer, for, forgive him or her. If not, divorce him or her, and you can marry. Do not just take one for yourself as a retaliation. Are you with me? It's not because your husband or your, your wife is having a third party, you just get one for your own. Even. Patas. <laughs> So, the covenant in marriage is until death, not up to 10 years or whatsoever. Uh, there was a couple who was celebrating their anniversary, and, and the, the wife greeted the husband, Happy anniversary, honey. And the husband was so sad. <laughs> so the wife asked, why are you so sad? It's our anniversary. I just remember your dad. He told me, if you're going to cheat on my daughter, I will send you to prison for 20 years or 10 years. And then why are you so sad? Because if I cheated on you and my, uh, your, your father sent me to prison for 10 years, I should be free by now. <laughs> and now it's 20 years I'm not still free with you, <laughs> from you. <laughs> That's why we, we, we make a covenant, not before the priest, not before the, the, uh, the civil registrar's office, but it is before God that till death do us part. Marriage will be till death. But sad to say, there are less Christians, there's no death yet, they're apart already. <laughs> Pastor, that's not my problem, you know. <laughs> okay, First Corinthians 7.39 a wife is bound by law as long as her husband lives, but if her husband dies, 
she is at liberty to be married to whom she wishes only in the Lord. So if the husband died or the wife died, the one who is still alive is free to marry another one. The marriage is the, his or her marriage with the with the with the one who died is no longer effective because he he died already. Oh, you might be praying, Lord, kunin mo na lang yung asawa ko. <laughs> you might be praying, Lord, take the life of my my husband or take the life of my wife. <laughs> and they said, it's it's easy. It's easy to offer a wife to the Lord uh, as they sing, sing it in the Catholic Church. Kunin mo, O Diyos, at tanggapin mo. <laughs> okay, so Malachi chapter 2 verse 16, For the Lord God of Israel says that he hates divorce. Even if, even if London allows divorce or the, uh, the law in UK allows divorce, if you, ha, uh, you, if you believe in God, if you fear God, divorce is not pleasing to the Lord. If you, if you plan to divorce, do not marry. Exactly. And that's what they do really. Because they believe in divorce, so they're just doing a living in situation. Why? So that when they don't want each other anymore, they just simply, thank you, goodbye, that's it. No more paperwork. <laughs> I've I, I read an, an, article, uh, an article in Canada. Uh, a couple whose business was photography decided to close their business because they don't want to cover that marriage of the same sex. And that's good. Amen? Ah, in London, people are quite liberated already. Oh, pastor naman, para ka naman, para, KJ ka naman, probinsyano kang probinsyano. We're in London already, you know? Who cares? If you really wanted to obey God, it doesn't matter where you are. Amen? And I don't care if you don't like me preaching the truth. I don't care if you say anything at all about me. It's none of my business. My business is to preach God's word. If you don't want to attend to this church because you've been hurt by the truth, it's none of my business. <laughs> Amen? It's up to you, really. Rather than, there's plenty of people in church, but we're living in compromise. We're not pleasing God because, hmm, pastor naman. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so, for it covers one's garment with violence, says the Lord of all. So, therefore, take heed to your spirit. That you do not deal treacherously. Okay, so homosexuality, fornication and adultery, divorce, assembling together. Mm, what about it, Pastor? Let's see. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25. And let us consider and give attentive, continuous care to watching over one another, studying how we may stir up, stimulate, and incite to love, and helpful deeds and noble activities. Not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together. Do not forsake, do not neglect the assembling together. And this is the assembly of the people of God. As a believer, are you not forsaking the assembling together? Mm, let's see. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Let me ask you, why did he say seek first? Any idea? Why did God say, says, seek first the kingdom of God? Come on, give me a straight away answer. Huh? 
because I, I, I don't uh, uh, no 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 you didn't get my my question why did why did he say didn't he say seek the kingdom of God but he said seek first the kingdom of God what's the emphasis of putting seek first the kingdom of God no 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 <laughs> you're, not, you're not following okay what's the difference if God says seek the kingdom of God and if he says seek first the kingdom of God over everything that means you've got another priorities God knows you've got something to do aside from seeking the kingdom of God if there's no other priorities God would simply say seek the kingdom of God but since he knows your needs, since he knows you've got a job, you've got a family, you've got somewhere to go, he put, seek first the kingdom of God. In other words, God said, I understand you've got something else to do, but seek first. Are we seeking first the kingdom of God? Hello? Pastor! God, God says, you should labor for six days in a week. Yes, but it also says, seek first the kingdom of God. Okay, Luke chapter 14, verse 16. Then he said to him, a certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say, to those who were invited, come for all things are now ready. What was the occasion? Supper. And why do they have to come? Because all things are now ready. Okay, let's see what happened. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground, I must, and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excuse. Does, does buying a ground a sin? Is buying a ground a sin? No. When does it become a sin? When you prioritize your business, okay? And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to test them. As I ask you, have me excuse. And this one as well. Still another said, I have married a wife and there I will go to test her. No, I didn't say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen this video clip in Facebook. They said it is important to have sex before marriage. Why? They're showing in the video that before having a sexual affair after their wedding, the, the, the wife was peeing on the toilet like that. <laughs> Not knowing that the husband married again. So he peed like that. <laughs> okay. So still another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant. Why was he angry? Nobody came aside from that? He wasn't prioritized or was it okay for for him to be uh, to be second priority was it okay for him to be ignored that's why he's he's becoming uh, angry if God is okay as people will say oh the Lord understand me naman pastor para kang hindi tao <laughs> I know the Lord will understand me if the master of the house then get angry, then he understand why you're not coming. The fact that he's angry, God is saying, uh, telling us, your excuses, no matter what, are not acceptable. Yep. I'll show you another point. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there, there is room. Then the master said to the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come 
to come in that my house be filled. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Sa Tagalog kung ayaw nyo, wag nyo. <laughs> if you don't want to come, feel free to do so. You are disqualified from my banquet. Amen? If the Lord didn't disqualify them, then it's okay. He accepted all excuses. The fact that he was angry and he disqualified them, he's not accepting excuses. Ouch. Unless you will adhere on his principle, you will not be, you will not be eager enough to attend the service. Amen. Uh, I have an uh, I have an uh, occasion with my fraternity brothers, wherein uh, they they told me, uh, Brad, Pastor, <laughs> you should encourage us, you should guide us into the truth. And I told them, that's what I'm doing. I keep on inviting you to attend the church. You're busy. If there is a birthday party, if there is a drinking session, there you are. Present all the time. So is it my fault? <laughs> okay. So application. What do we need to do? In verse 6, it says, My people perish because of lack of knowledge. So for you to have knowledge, read and study God's word. How often do you read your Bible? Hmm? Huh? Every day? How long? 15 minutes? <laughs> I just I just read one of my Facebook status uh, one of my friends in Facebook status she said she said she was spending 14 hours in Facebook and 4 hours in study and I told her you must be a cum laude in Facebook. <laughs> you will have a loyalty award in Facebook. Why? Because she spends so much time in Facebook, but in God's word, I don't think so. So second, do not reject or ignore his word. After you have heard, after you have, after you have learned, do not reject, do not ignore. To ignore is just like if that man doesn't exist. To ignore God's word is just saying, oh, I haven't seen that. I haven't heard that. I don't know that. Do not reject or do not ignore his word. Third, do not forget the law of God. Uh -huh. When you're still here in church, God's word will still be in your mind, in your heart. But when you go to work, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> when you're having contention with somebody, when you're quarreling with somebody, or when you're arguing with somebody, you might, be, you might find it difficult to control your emotions. And anger may make your mouth quicker than your mind. Isn't it? <laughs> so do not forget the law of God, for take his blessings with gratefulness. Why? Hosea chapter 4 verse 7, the more they increase, the more they sin against me. And people could be like that. The more blessings they receive, the more they sin before God. So do not take his blessings with, uh, with ungratefulness. So I will change their glory into shame, God said. Romans chapter 2 verse 4, or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? God is good all the time, and his goodness should lead you to repentance. Amen? But sad to say, as the more they increase, the more they sin before me. And it could be true to us. When you're still in the Philippines, Lord, please approve my visa. 
When you're in London, Lord, give me indefinite visa. When you have the indefinite visa, Lord, give me a British passport. You keep on asking, but you're not repenting. Why? Because you're becoming ungrateful to the blessings of God. That's why Hosea 4.7 says, The more they increase, the more they sin before me. Amen? Do n- fourth, do not set your heart on iniquity. If you set your heart on iniquity, you will ignore his word, you will ignore his Bible, you will ignore the pastors, the messengers of God's word. Why? Because your heart is already set on iniquity. Amen? They eat up the sin of my people. They set their heart on their iniquity. Do you do you know a person whose heart is set on iniquity? Do you understand if I say they set their heart on on their iniquity? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Huh? Uh, what is meant by iniquity? <laughs> iniquity is the wickedness of your heart regardless of your action. Transgression is the act of committing a sin, but iniquity, you don't have to do a sin, but you have iniquity in your heart because it is the attitude of your heart. Amen? Are you with me? That's why, that's why David said, Lord, search my heart and see if there is iniquity in it. So you don't have to do something for you to be wicked as long as there is iniquity in your heart. That's it. But God said they set their heart on their iniquity. Let's say for example, uh, uh, there was a there was an example of a man helping a scorpion. Do you know a scorpion? If you don't know the scorpion, I will stop talking. <laughs> he beat the scorpion because the scorpion was on the water. So what he did, he picked up this scorpion. But every time he picked up the scorpion, the scorpion bite him because it is his its nature to bite. But the man didn't easily give up. Every time the scorpion bite him, he picked that scorpion again. But what I'm trying to say there, because no matter how good you are to the scorpion, it is just its instinct to bite. And it is so with people whose hearts are set on their iniquity. No matter how good you are to them, no matter how often they hear God's word, they are still of doing their iniquities or they still ignore your word because their heart is set on iniquity already. Amen? That's why, that's why they don't want to listen to you. They want, they want to ignore you and most of the time they will hate you for telling them the truth because their heart is already set on iniquity. Amen? Okay, last, live on what you know from the Bible. There's no point leave knowing the Bible and you won't live on what you know. Do you agree with me? And my time is finished and so is my sermon. Challenge. Are you grounded and rooted on God's word? In the process, are you equipped with God's word? Are you in right relationship with the Lord? Yes. yes. Okay. Is your heart set unto righteousness or iniquity? Mm. <laughs> okay. To conclusion, to say chapter 4, verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If you don't want to perish, if you don't want to, to be destroyed, then have knowledge and live on what you know. Okay? I would like to invite Sister Cora and Sister Sally as we pray for them.
And we also would like to uh, call on the visitors or for the first time who attended church today to come forward. We would like to offer prayers for you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we'll just paint bowling this time. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Okay, let's pray for them. <laughs> Jennifer, Elda, Laila, and Rose, and Jane, and Paul. Okay, let's pray for them. Lord God, we thank you for the lives of our brethren. We thank you for the life of Sister uh, Kali and Sister Cora. May you be the one to bless their heart's desire and their birthdays would be more meaningful and not just their birthdays but the rest of their lives. And we pray, O oh Lord, for, for your pa favor upon the lives of uh, these friends of ours, visitors for today, that you would touch their hearts and they will commit their lives unto you. May you bless Sister Laila, Sister Jennifer, Sister Elda, Sister Jane, and Sister, Sister Rose, and Steve and Paul. We claim, Lord, that whatever their hearts desire, whatever their need, you will be the one to intervene and provide their need. And we claim that you will bless them in a special way, that they will be a blessing to the people around them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, batiin po natin sila at i-welcome sa church. Happy birthday. Happy. <laughs> welcome sa church. Welcome sa church. Thank you for coming. Welcome sa church. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Offerings. 